All right, so we are getting into the final stretches here of theory as it goes with video and audio. And audio is a big part of video production, although we don't usually put the word in the title. Um, what, th what things sound like have a huge impact on how people feel about them. Uh, if you if you have a, a doubt about that, then you should probably try watching your favorite movie with the sound turned off and see if it's nearly as emotionally impacting, or try watching an episode of some cop drama without uh, the soundtrack and see if you can follow what's going on at all. Um, either one of those sort of emotional or informational channels that gets carried by the audio are both very important for your video. So um, that's why we do spend some time thinking about audio. So what do you need to know about audio for video production? Oh, all right. So the basic idea that you need to know about audio is very simple, and that is the issue of proximity. Audio is created by vibration. Something goes blah. That makes a sound. The sound gets carried through the air by vibrating the air molecules, and that eventually reaches your ear or a microphone, and you can hear it or record it. Uh, what happens over the course of that travel through the air is that it gets weaker and weaker uh, as the original source of energy, the sound creator, um, is further and further down that chain. Uh, the signal gets less and less. Things, it's what we call fall off. The, the signal gets lower and lower over time. So check me out here. I got my microphone right up here in my mouth, and I'm talking, and you can hear me real good. You can hear me smooth and loud. But as I back away from the microphone, I'm not going to talk any louder. I'm going to talk the same. Uh, so as I back up here, you're starting to get a little bit less of my voice. And as I get back here a little bit further away, you're like, hey, I can't even hardly hear that at all. And if I turn around here and start talking to myself, you can't hear a damn thing that I'm saying, right? So obviously where we put the microphone in this equation has a huge effect on how good the audio that comes out the other side is going to be right so that's pretty simple so what do we do in video in order to get our microphone where we want it normally we don't want it up in the picture like i've got it here so uh i'm actually going to crank this down just a little bit get it out of my picture uh but still try to keep it sounding good so how do we do that with regular video well when we're doing video production we use something called a shotgun microphone. This is not a double-barreled implement of mass destruction. However, it is a fantastic tool for recording good audio. Shotgun microphone. Now, why do we call it a shotgun microphone? Well, that has to do with what we call a pickup pattern, which is the area around a microphone in which it is sensitive to the sounds. So what this has, a shotgun, has what's called a hypercardioid pickup pattern. That means that there's a large area in front, so it's got what's called a, a long throw, so it can pick up sounds from further away than other types of microphones. And it's got a little bit in the back that it can pick up as well. Um, but it rejects sound to the sides of the microphone. And that's gonna be really important when we get into our lab portion and practicing about where and how we place this microphone. It's very important to understand that there's basically a cylinder around this microphone around which it rejects sound. So imagine a line here and a line here, and anything off to the side there or off to the side here is not gonna be heard by this microphone very well. What's in front of it for a certain distance is gonna be sound really good. So where you point this microphone really matters. Now, how does this work? There's different types of microphones. Obviously, another thing about, you know, one of the things that defines the microphone is the pickup pattern. Some microphones are omnidirectional, so they actually pick up sound equally well in every direction. Not so with a, with a shotgun. It's very directional, it's very pointed. It has a narrow, uh, sensitive region in the front. Uh, so how does this work? It uses electricity, just like our lights. It requires electricity so that it can amplify the signal and record uh, what would otherwise be too low of a signal to pick up. So your less sensitive mics don't need electricity, don't need power, but we need batteries or electrical power to power these microphones so that they can take that weak signal that comes in over the air and really amplify it and really uh, juice it up so that it can make something useful out of it. So. Here's a quick diagram on how to eat one battery or eat five batteries. Um, pretty sure that that's useful, uh, and I don't think it requires any explanation. So let's move on. Batteries are kind of a pain to deal with. Uh, you always have to have charged ones. Uh, you constantly have to remember to check them. So what's nice about working with video, with audio 
equipment is that we have a thing called phantom power and this is uh, harnesses the ectoplasmic uh, power of ghosts in order to charge our microphones what no that's not that's not how that works Oh, sorry. Actually, it turns out that it's actually uh, just a silly name for a feature that we have on our cameras that will provide power to a microphone via the audio connection. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh, phantom power. Uh, you don't have to run a separate cable to a microphone in order to give it this power. They figured out a way to squeeze electricity on the same cable with the audio signal without messing either one of those things up. So it uses a 48 volt signal. So you'll see this indicator on the camera sometimes uh, instead of the word phantom power. Um, that sounds very, that sounds like something that the emperor in Star Wars would use. Uh, uh, and this here, I don't know if you guys know him, that's the phantom from comic book days, a really bad Billy Zane movie back in the 90s. Uh, I think it's best that we all forget about that, but I'm going to keep it alive here on the slideshow. But yeah, 48 volts is how much gets transmitted along that, and there is a switch on the camera which will allow you to turn this on or off. So in order to not have to worry about keeping microphones fed with batteries, eating one or five at a time, you want to make sure that you're able to provide it with this positive 48 volts. So we'll be looking at that on the camera as well. So that's about the microphone, but how do we get it where we want it, right? So we've got power to it. We know that it's got a directionality to it. So, you know, how do we, how do we get it all connected? This is where my friend Ash comes in. And if you haven't seen Army of Darkness, then you oughta. And uh, if you do, then you'll probably understand this graphic here. This is Ash as portrayed by everybody's favorite dude, whose name just completely escapes me at the moment. But... Uh, Anyway, this is our boom pole. He's holding what's called a boom pole. Uh, it's called a boom because it's a long stick, and that's actually what a boom means, is a long stick. You know, very, very fancy nomenclature there, but that's what we're dealing with. So what we have is we have our microphone, which goes inside of a windscreen or a zeppelin, uh, as this is shaped, uh, to help keep the wind off of it. Uh, and then there's a shock mount. Now, uh, this is not a picture of a shock mount. I don't know why I would show you something that's not a shock mount and call it a shock mount, but this is actually a pistol grip uh, so that you could hold the microphone manually. A shock mount actually has uh, a suspension to it that will insulate the microphone from the shaking of the boom pole. So when I say shock mount and an arrow pointing to it, what I really mean is not that at all, but I'll show you what a shock mount looks like uh, and we'll be clear on that. And then this is the boom pole, and it has several knuckles on here that allow it to uh, retract and expand. And one way or the other, one way or another, the cable goes from the microphone down either around the boom pole wrapped around, or some of the fancier ones actually have internal connections, so you can run it out the bottom of the boom pole. And it goes back to the camera using the XLR audio inputs. This is an XLR cable. It's a three pin connection. It's got a locking connection. It's a very high quality professional audio input. And it's one of the best things about the DVX cameras that we're using in class is that that is sort of the default professional standard audio connector. And you will get good signal. You actually have two inputs. You can run two microphones. Each microphone only takes one channel. Uh, unless you have a stereo microphone or if you have two mic microphones you can run them in separately under both uh, cables there and that's where the sound gets recorded is in the camera right along with the video so you don't have any issues of synchronization and post and all that good stuff so it's one of the big benefits of shooting on video instead of you know film ha, film whatever who's ever heard of that right Okay, so we've got our pole, we've got our microphone on it, it's connected to the camera so that we're getting power over phantom power. Our 48 volts is coming from the camera to the microphone to give it juice, and the audio signal is coming back down the cable to give the camera its audio recording. So what do we do next? Well, we have to put it somewhere. We have to figure out where on earth does this microphone go anyway. So um, I'm going to show you a good example of that. This is, uh, well, incest, for lack of a better term. But uh, this frame from The Empire Strikes Back actually shows you uh, sort of the reality of what happens on set. Uh, so this red outline here is something like the frame that the camera is seeing. And uh, this picture was taken from behind the camera. 
and you'll see that there's a boom pole extending from behind the camera with a microphone pointing downwards at the actors. So this is how this gets done, is that the person who's monitoring the audio and running the audio is holding this boom pole up above the actors, pointing it down at them so it can capture their dialogue, but outside of the frame, obviously. You don't want to have your microphone creeping into frame and getting in the way of what's trying to be said, right? Because that's not cool. That's not what we want to see. That's not what we paid our $12 to come into the theater to see some boom poles going on. So um, what's important here is that it's uh, it's not way, way, way out of frame. It's, you know, it's, it's a few inches out of the frame, as close as you can get it to get good sound far enough away so that you actually don't have it dipping down into the frame. So proximity counts, remember, this is really good sound, this is not so great sound, right? If you had to listen to this for like an hour and a half or however long this lecture is, you'd be mad at me, right? Much better to have me right up here all upon the microphone. So this is how we do this uh, without being able to see it and without me obviously being bearing down on the microphone like this and give you the late night DJ talk like, yeah, okay, so now we're gonna spin something from the late 80s for the ladies. Um, that has nothing to do with anything, but we'll move on. So, in order to get this microphone out there, uh, you have to have a technique. And uh, we'll go over that quickly. This is how to hold a boom pole, right? Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's a lot of wrong ways to do this. And we'll work with this in the class. This is, there's, there's sort of an art and science to this as well. This is a very physical uh, aspect. Uh, you know, you, you can you can look at and images and, and read about this all day long, but until you actually start trying to get your hands on it and get the feel for how to position your body and how to move things and balance, it's it's like dance sort of. It's got kind of a kind of a physicality to it like that. So we're we'll talk about how to hold a boom pole. In general, what you want to have is a nice fluid connection. Uh, of your joints. So you're going to want to keep your knees and your elbows slightly bent so that you can move around without uh, either passing out or uh, having a lot of problems. Now you're going to have this over your head which means it's going to be sort of uncomfortable to hold. So um, the vast majority of the poles should actually be a, a ahead of you so that you can be standing behind the camera uh, or to the side of the frame and still get the mic out in front of the in front of the speakers as much as possible. But you want to have some room on the back end there to counterbalance so that you're not bearing the full brunt of the entire lever arm action. Because what happens is uh, there's a very simple physics uh, theory here that the weight of something uh, gets multiplied by the lever arm that it's attached to. So this mic doesn't weigh hardly anything, but when you multiply it by the distance over here, it gets to be sort of really heavy. So if you move your fulcrum, the, the place that you're holding it, a little bit closer in, and give yourself some of that multiplying power back here so that some of the back of the pole counterbalances it, you'll be a lot more comfortable. It'll make it seem a lot less heavy. Right, so there's that idea. And it's important that you keep your, your knees and elbows slightly bent, and what you're gonna do is, instead of moving your arms around to sort of get the mic where you want it, you wanna try to keep your arms right over your head and your elbows bent. Let's see if I can model this. Something, something like this. You're looking, you're looking for this kind of action. And so instead of moving all that around with your arms and, and everything, which is both tiring and also uh, less stable, you're going to be kind of jerky with that, and it's going to tend to make noise because you'll be shaking the pole when you do that. You want to actually use your hips and your legs to make most of your movement. So you, you know, if you're holding it above your head, then you you can't see, but I'm I'm not moving my arms, right? I'm moving my whole body, and I'm shifting and pivoting using my legs. Your legs are a lot stronger and a lot more stable. Your legs and hips uh, will do sort of what they call sort of like the gross motor movement a lot better, uh, and that will use up a lot less energy. It'll seem a lot less heavy, and you won't make as many vibrations that will mess up your sound. So we'll be practicing that again. The physicality, the dance of recording sound is there. But I said, you know, okay, but where do we put this microphone, right? We get it out over the actors, we get it close to them, but, you know, we've got to think about the directionality of the microphone, where should we point it, um, how far away does it get? Uh, and there's a very simple answer to this one. And I'll let Keanu Reeves explain it, because I think he says it a lot better than I do. Um, <laughs> what is it he's saying there? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but what you want to do is aim for the collar. You could sort of imagine... Uh, you know, if somebody's wearing a tie, you'd, you'd, you'd aim it right at the knot. Um, and what you're doing here is going for the source of most of the vibrations that cause 
sound. And in this case, we're talking about human speech. And it turns out that there's a thing right down here called the voice box, right? So you can hear what I'm saying pretty well without my lips being on there. If I get my lips all up in here, then you hear a lot of the details of my... It sounds terrible, right? But if the microphone is pointed down to my neck, you can I can go... And you don't hear it that much, but you still hear my voice. Isn't that pretty weird? Most of the voice is coming from my voice box. There's a few distinct shapings of the sounds that come out of my mouth, but if you get too close up on there, then you get a lot of teeth and tongue and disgusting things. So you don't want to point at the mouth. Plus, if you point at the mouth, you're going to have a problem with popping peas and peas. I had to get around my pop filter because I actually use a thing to protect that, uh, to protect my mic from it. But if you go popping peas and Talk it, talk it, talk. See, the wind coming out there can uh, cause problems for the microphone overloading it. But if you point it at the neck, then popping peas aren't a problem. And T-T-T-T-T-T-T's are not a problem either. So uh, you're not getting that direct wind blast from the mouth on the microphone, but you're still getting the good voice box action. So when you point at somebody and you want to find the place to put the microphone, go for the neck, go for the collar, and you will be good. So, um, we've talked a lot about this. Uh, we'll go over uh, in another, another lesson some techniques for getting good sound while you're on set, but this is the basics that you need to know about uh, what audio is, how you get it into your camera and onto your tape, and what you need to do on set in order to get that microphone where you need it to get good sound. So, do this, practice it, and make some badass movies.